You are about to witness history in the making. What's up everyone, it's Hayden here from the Pop Culture Gamers podcast. Tonight is a really unusual show, unfortunately we were planning on recording our Christmas show uh, with all of your votes from the various different categories of best picture, best game etc, but unfortunately Steve's internet is well and truly dead. In a matter of fact, he has no internet connection at the moment, so we need to send him some, like, you know, baskets of fruit or whatever, because he can't play Destiny either, which is probably more traumatic for him than anything else. So we wish Steve all of the best. What that means is that we're having a bit of a plan, so our penultimate show of the year isn't our penultimate show, and just to make sure that for those of you who are working in the morning, we're just having a very little show with just me um, talking, and basically what I thought I would do, rather than go through all of the votes, because Steve and I will meet after Christmas to do that and uh, get another show out to you, what we're going to do, or what I'm going to do, is just have a bit of a quick run through about some of the events of 2018 just so that we can have a bit of a recap as we're coming towards the end of the year and to be honest it's been another amazing year 2018 brought some good news for those people who were suffering from alzheimer's the gladstone institute in san francisco researchers uh they changed a protein associated with a condition reversing damage to affected brain cells in the process this might mean a future uh, cure for anybody suffering from alzheimer's which is always good if you were looking into a more sustainable source of protein then you can look no further than buffalo worms in 2018 a netherlands-based company called bug foundation rolled out buffalo worm burgers saying that uh, they are a healthy sustainable alternative to traditional beef burgers i don't know about you but i will not be joining the queue anytime in the near future at mcdonald's for a buffalo worm burger it doesn't really sound like my cup of tea or in a matter of fact my kind of burger amazon ceo uh, jeff uh, bezo all uh, also caused headlines for his 42 million investment in a 10,000 year clock. Evidently, this clock is going to live in a hollowed out mountain in West Texas and will keep the time for 10,000 years. I wonder what they're going to do when we actually have leap seconds, which occasionally happen as well. Let's see in 10,000 years, I suppose. After three years of studying as well, Italian scientists have also determined in July that it's possible that the red planet, i.e. Mars, has a 20 kilometer wide lake of liquid water at its polar ice cap. So maybe the planet isn't quite as barren as we once thought. Research has also implanted brain cells into mice this year and over time this will teach us more about the workings of the human brains and help doctors repair the damaged brain tissue in the future. In February this year, SpaceX successfully conducted its maiden flights of its most powerful rocket, the Falcon Heavy, from the John F. Kennedy Space Center in Florida. In March, Barbara Streisand also uh, reported to uh, Variety that she has actually cloned her dog, Samantha, so uh, she missed the dog so much that she actually had two dogs created from the original dog cells. In April 2018, researchers at MIT also debuted a computer inf- interface that can transcribe a word's persons into thinking, which is also an utterly amazing thing, and maybe who knows might help people who aren't able to talk to actually tell us what they want. 
Another thing as well, technological wise, in April, scientists in Minnesota have also successfully managed to 3D print human skin for the first time, which will open up all sorts of medical applications in the future, hopefully help people like burn victims and whatever. In April as well, on the 29th, we all love The Simpsons. We know that that show has been going on for an awful long time, but it has actually surpassed Gunsmoke as one of the uh, highest, or the highest counted TV series of all time with 635 episodes. Also in April, Black Panther on the 18th is the first film to be shown at a commercial cinema in Saudi Arabia for 35 years as the cinemas are reopened and becomes the fifth Marvel movie also to earn $1 billion worldwide. In May this year, we also saw the wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle uh, in uh, St. George's Chapel in England um, with an estimated global viewing of 1.9 billion people. So basically nearly a third of the planet watched that entire wedding. I certainly wasn't one of them, I must admit. In July, um, on the 17th, The Incredibles 2 sets a box office record for the animated uh, release, or the highest animated release, earning 180 million in its opening weekend, which is absolutely phenomenal. And in July, um, astronomers discovered the brightest object in a known universe. They discovered a quasar uh, with a very, very long name, but basically the shortened version is P352-15, uh, which is 13 billion light years away from Earth. And it started in the, or that part of the universe. The light has taken that 13 billion years to get there. And the universe was only 7% of its present age when that light first travelled from the quasar to come to Earth, which is utterly mind-blowing. The whole universe being in its infancy. In July, the actress Scarlett Johansson uh, also, after an awful lot, there was an awful lot of this in the press about uh, she was going to be playing a transgender uh, role in a film. The transgender community didn't like this and she was criticised for it, uh, for her casting rather than not casting somebody who is transgender into the role. Uh, and she resigned for, oh, sorry, not resigned, but withdrew uh, from negotiations in terms of being part of that film. Another amazing thing, and I'm sure that you will have seen all of this in the newspapers and on TV because it went on for quite some time, in matter of fact, 17 days. Um, but 12 boys and their football coach were successfully rescued on the 10th of July uh, from a flooded um, Tham Luang Nang Non Cave in Thailand. Um, so the ordeal basically got worldwide attention it was in all of the news and utterly amazing that anybody could survive you know considering those circumstances especially for that long on the 2nd of august there was also a big thing in the first in fact that we had the first company or public listed company to reach a value of one trillion dollars and that was of course apple so they're obviously doing something right since then. The net worth, I think, has now swapped and it's now back to Microsoft being the biggest uh, company, if I remember rightly. Whether or not that's for more than one trillion, I'm not too sure. I think one of the really good things that came out was a report from the United Nations uh, as well, which concerned the ozone layer. So the ozone layer is basically the protective shield in Earth's atmosphere, um, and we knew from various different scientific uh, reports that that had been thinning out um, and scientists raised the alarm about the impact of uh, chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs back in the 80s, which resulted in a number of uh, bans uh, globally 
by governments because of obviously the removal of the ozone layer has a detrimental impact on ourselves as well uh, and basically what the united nations scientists are now saying is that in the northern hemisphere it should be completely restored by the 2030s which is fantastic news for all of us and it hopefully is demonstrating that maybe the effects of global warm warming in some way can be reversed if we take action at the right time of course one of the things is that the latter part of the uh, this year we did lose a number of well very talented uh, individuals that we all you know grew up with and loved over the years and on the 6th of september was uh, burt reynolds so Burt Reynolds starred in a number of uh, different uh, movies, but was probably most famous for films uh, such as Smoking the Bandit and The Cannonball Run and those sort of things. Very famous cultural icon and such a great shame uh, that we actually lost him as well. On the 7th of October as well, we had a um, fantastic change to a long-running franchise with being Doctor Who in terms of Jodie Whittaker uh, took on the role she you know got her own sonic screwdriver and now she's driving the TARDIS as uh, the 13th Doctor and the first female Doctor uh, on the BBC television series some people don't like it I think a lot of you know purist sort of people thinking that the Doctor should be male the Doctor has, or not the Doctor, but in terms of Time Lords, Time Lords have swapped genders uh, before. I mean, the most recent one is obviously uh, Missy, which we uh, had, which was the female incarnation of the Master. And I quite ironically, Missy killed the Master, which I thought was uh, quite a nice uh, twist in one of the earlier episodes of, uh, la or one of the later episodes of last season. Um, so let's see what season two is. I mean, obviously we've got Christmas coming up and I think that there is a Christmas Day show of Doctor Who uh, as well. This time the Doctor has three companions, one of which is Bradley Walsh from The Chase. Or for those of you who knew him from before, when he was um, on Coronation Street as well. Um, so, you know, he's well, Bradley Walsh has been around on loads of different things. I always think he's a bit of a strange choice, but he's there as well. But to be honest, I do think it, even though there are quite a lot of them in terms of companions, normally the Doctor's had one or two, I do think that they actually provide uh, a good support for the Doctor or the new Doctor, especially as she's finding a feat about what it means to be a female Doctor. I also think as well that they've greatly upped the production values and most of the stories aren't quite as, for want of a better term, childish as in some of the Doctor Who stories, while we all love Doctor Who, some of them were um, not the deepest into scientific fact, for example. Another uh, actor who died this year as well was the actor Scott Wilson, who you will have uh, hopefully have known as Herschel from The Walking Dead. So unfortunately he passed on the 6th of October and on the 17th of October we also um, had to say goodbye to uh, Margaret Kidder who was also Lois Lane from the original uh, Superman movies with Christopher Reeve. Um, so she played uh, obviously Superman's love interest across all of those uh, movies. On the 30th of October NASA's Kepler missions uh, ends after the spacecraft ran out of fuel and then on the 12th of november one of the uh, very big uh, loss we always used to love his cameos and we did a special uh, on him as well so if you've not listened to that before just have a look while you after you've listened to this because we've done a stanley special stanley obviously being the creator of so so many different superheroes and supervillains uh, for the Marvel Universe, his constant appearances in the vast majority of the films. And the great thing is, we are going to get to see him in at least four more Marvel movies before all of the ones that he's recorded have run out. 
again in uh, November uh, on the 26th, we had NASA's InSight probe, uh, which successfully landed on Mars. Um, obviously, that probe is going to be, you know, exploring the substance of Mars and, you know, what is there as well, which is very exciting. And then probably the biggest news, uh, certainly in this country, in England, uh, but also in December was the fact that the Conservatives uh, MPs triggered a vote of no confidence in Theresa May because of all of the Brexit deals and uh, everything that was going on there. Miss May was backed by 200 Tory MPs uh, compared to the 117 rebels who uh, opted to oust her from her role um, and basically it was quite a traumatic um well not traumatic but uh dramatic probably is a better word 24 hours in the hall of the brexit saga in video games there was loads of great games released this year one of the biggest games of the year was god of war on the playstation 4 and obviously the sequel in the long line of god of war games this time where we are actually uh, playing the game you actually still a Krotos but you're a father as well and you have to protect your son right throughout the whole game following the death of his mother uh, which happens right at the start of the game as well. Another big game in terms of 2018 was the very much anticipated Red Dead Redemption 2 which is quite possibly either this or God of War are the probably the two of the best looking games that have ever graced a console in any way shape or form red dead redemption 2 technically it is an absolute marvel piece uh, of video gaming uh, in terms of how it looks another big one as well was monster hunter world i did play some of this uh, quite a bit um need to go back to it actually Evidently takes many, many hundred hours. I think somewhere about three or four hundred hours to complete. One game that I did complete was Marvel's Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4, which was a fantastic game. Loads and loads of side quests to be able to play as well. Really, really super entertaining in every way, shape or form. Absolutely loved the game. Not really so fond of the DLC for the game, though, I do have to admit. And one of the games that I have really sunk in so many hours this year has to be Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I absolutely love this game. It's absolutely teeming with loads of stuff from history um, in terms of everything that happens in that uh, game. It is visually really quite stunning as well. So entertaining uh, to play. Everything is absolutely brilliant on that game as far as I'm concerned. Another big game as well was obviously Fortnite, which has really sort of taken off this year uh, with loads of people playing. Another an Xbox exclusive for a change would have been Sea of Thieves, uh, which again takes an awful long time. PSVR we have Astrobot the rescue mission uh, and Moss both on VR we can't let anything go past without mentioning Destiny uh, Forsaken uh, which was released in uh, September really enjoyable game uh, as well No Man's Sky next as well just going to prove that Hello Games are actually continuing to support uh, this game which is now really quite um, ageing but they are still continuing to support um, that and developing it into the game that they always promised it would be. Most More recently, I actually played a bit of Hitman 2 uh, as well, which is really enjoyable if you've played the Hitman games before. It is definitely worth having a go on that. Um, one game I've looked at with a lot of interest is Dead Cells. I've never actually played it, but uh, quite like the look of it. On the Xbox side, again, we have... Forza Horizon 4, which is really visually quite stunning, straight to Game Pass as well, and also 
don't forget that if it's on it's on Xbox plays anywhere, so it works on your PC as well. So a really good uh, thing there. There was also Subnautica, which currently Epic Games are also giving away for free uh, on the PC as well. So that's a, a really good uh, opportunity for anybody who hasn't played there, that as well. There was the new Pokemon game uh, on the Switch, which is Pokemon Let's Go, and the two varieties, either the Eevee or the uh, Pikachu variety uh, of that game, depending upon which your choice is, because Nintendo always like to give you that. World of Warcraft uh, Battle of Azeroth uh, was also released uh, this year. We had our obligatory Call of Duty Black Ops release, um, which is the first time it's actually ditched the single player game uh, in there as well. We also saw Nintendo being innovative in terms of the Labo uh, concepts. Personally, not a big fan of them, but you know, a lot of people haven't been enjoying them. Fallout 76, which a lot of people were nicknaming Fallout 76% off, and you can certainly get it with 76% off on CD keys. Uh, that, again, is another one of those uh, things that's um, there as well. There's also loads of other games in there which I haven't mentioned. There was Frostpunk on uh, the PC, which um, looks absolutely amazing as well. So... Most formats, they've had absolutely fantastic collections of games uh, this year. Obviously, come March next year, then PS Plus will be stopping the Vita games and the PS3 games. So there's only three more months of that. It will be interesting to see what they actually bring uh, in place of those, if anything, to be honest. Movie-wise, there was an absolutely fantastic selection of movies released this year as well. We had uh, A Quiet Place, which was a drama, horror, mystery sort of uh, film set in a post-apocalyptic world where a family is forced to live in silence. There was Red Sparrow uh, with Jennifer Lawrence, which is probably as close as we've had to a Black Widow movie uh, being released so far this year. <clears throat> we saw The Rock coming back with Rampage, based on, obviously, Rampage, the video games, which was an enjoyable blast. We also had It uh, as a remaster, uh, not a remaster, but a, a reimagining of the film. Another Rock movie was Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, which is a really entertaining uh, movie also has Karen Gillian, uh, who um, is on Guardians of the Galaxy, but was also on Doctor Who in the Matt Smith years uh, as well. Really enjoyable um, movie to watch and a worthy sort of sequel to the original uh, Jumanji as well. Other films that we can uh, think of uh, during the year would also be uh, including... The Beyond, which was uh, set in 2019, The Beyond chronicles the groundbreaking mission which uh, sends out astronauts modified with advanced robotics who are newly discovered wormhole into a void. I really enjoyed that. That's available on Netflix at the moment if you want to actually watch that movie. We also had Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, which was a very enjoyable movie and there's a very emotional sort of scene on that just as the boat is leaving. Anybody who's seen that film will obviously know what I'm on about immediately. We had the fantastic Avengers Infinity War, which is obviously setting up the, se the sequel coming this year as well. Mission Impossible Fallout, that was a really good uh, movie starring uh, Tom Cruise, uh, and Henry Cavill as well in there. The Incredibles 2, which I'd mentioned before, was the highest grossing animated movie of all time. Bohemian Rhapsody has to be one of the best movies I've seen in a very long time. Uh, Rami Malek is absolutely brilliant as Freddie Mercury in this movie. This is a movie that's the story of uh, Queen, really well worth uh, seeing. One movie I did miss with, 
I want to see is Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. I think that looks absolutely fantastic. We had the sequel to a very old movie, Mary Poppins as well, for all of those who's what everybody who's watched that as a kid. There was also the new Halloween uh, movie as well, which saw the return of Jamie Lee Curtis in there as well. First Man, which uh, looked at, obviously, the first man on the moon. Aquaman. We had Tomb Raider, which was a, a very worthy sort of um, movie for holding that title as well. And there were so many others. I haven't mentioned ones like Creed 2 or Ralph Breaks the Internet, which was quite an enjoyable uh, movie for the family sort of uh, viewing pleasure. There's loads of films. I'm sure that you've probably identified a number of ones that I haven't already mentioned as well. Blu-rays and DVDs as well. There was all of, well, most of those films have actually come out on Blu-ray and DVD throughout the course of the year. Uh, I, I even forgot Black Panther. That was another brilliant movie and obviously quite an important one in terms of, you know, its portrayal with, you know, strong uh, black characters as well and really absorbing that sort of African kind of heritage in terms of the movie. Absolutely brilliant there. Really enjoyable. So we also saw over this time period the new Star Trek Discovery TV series, which personally I was very sceptical about running up to it. But after seeing it, I have to admit, I really enjoyed it. And the twists in there are absolutely brilliant and can't wait until January so that we can actually see season two of that as well and where that will bring us then. So that's the review of 2018, basically, in terms of everything that has happened up until this date, which is the 23rd of December, which is when we were actually going to be recording the show for you. So it's a little bit more of a different show, obviously dramatically shorter as well. One of the things I will say uh, as well, just to obviously give you a bit more information, if you're off at the moment, um, recently I went to see Aquaman, uh, the movie, which is obviously the latest one in the DC Universe um, series of films. And I have to admit, after seeing the trailers the first time, that went round and I thought that just looks like a CGI mashup and then seeing the second lot of trailers which actually did spark my interest I can wholly recommend going and seeing that as a movie it's probably going to be the well it is the big one that's uh, on over the Christmas period for all of us who love pop culture as well so get yourself down to the cinema to see that if you've got the time as well other than that I think that there's a Bond movie on as we talk right, or as I talk right now, which is Casino Royale, another very good uh, movie, although Daniel Craig and that whole Bond sort of storyline is personally not my favourite, but we can't all love everything, can we? Anyway, that's going to be the end of the show for this week, or rather for today. Steve and I, when he gets his internet back, evidently the story is that the box outside of his house uh, the green box where everything's rooted through has gone and they have to replace it which is going to take them a few days uh, but we have arranged because we're both off in between Christmas and New Year we will do a recording which we were planning on having a week's break but we're not going to we're just going to uh, do that show uh, so that you know all of the votes and that also means, if you want to, there's actually a bit of time for you to get in some other votes. So there are some surprising and some not surprising uh, things. And we'll probably try and do it a little bit Oscar stylish so that you'll actually enjoy that. Then, coming in January, we'll come back, you know, hot off the heels of uh, the new year. We probably will have about a week um, or so after that, uh, you know, after uh, a bit from new year uh, so that there probably won't be a show first week but probably be second week back um a weekend i should say and we'll carry on as normal for effectively what is season two of the pop culture gamer podcast so 
all that I can really say is thank you everyone for your support over the last uh, 12 months. Also, thank you to everybody who's um, you know left us uh, good reviews over the last uh, year as well. Um, and everybody who has given us encouragement and support uh, for, well, this whole enterprise, really. I do hope that you all get exactly what it is that you want for Christmas. And, well, have a great time and we'll see you soon. Thanks for listening. Bye. You are about to witness history in the making. (laughs) 